Welcome back to another episode of the Watch Me Wholesale Show. Here's how it works. I'm gonna randomly pick a market, then we're gonna pick a distressed property that's for sale, we're gonna analyze it, run the numbers, and then pick up the phone and call and make an offer. All of that and more, coming up. This video is brought to you by Fast Track, a partner program where Jerry Norton will fund your deals and mentor you. Learn more at FastTrackWithJerry.com. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Norton and I went from dead broke to millionaire flipping houses. And after doing over a thousand deals, I created this channel to help you master the art of wholesaling and flipping so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Okay, so I've got up here our picker wheel. We've got 10 random markets chosen and we're gonna get started here. I'm gonna click spin. We're gonna, it's gonna randomly pick a market for us and then we're gonna find a deal, analyze it, and then make an offer. Here we go. What's it gonna be? Atlanta, Georgia. All right, let's find a deal. All right, so let's look for a lead. We're gonna go into Zillow and I'm gonna look up Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm gonna go in here and make sure I've got reset filters. And so here we are, here's the Atlanta market. These are all the actives right now with the map on the left. Here's a list of those homes on the right. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna look for specifically a distressed property. Now, one way that I do this on Zillow is, whoops, let me zoom back into our market, is I go over here to the more tab right up here. And then I'm gonna go down to the remarks and I look for a keyword and um, I've got a list of all of the best keywords for searching for distressed properties. Things like, you know, TLC, fixer upper, as is, investor, and so on. And, I'm, and then I search for properties with those keywords. And then what Zillow does is any listing where in the description it has that keyword phrase, it will grab a list of, of properties active for sale with that keyword phrase. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the keyword investor this time. See what that pulls up. So if I put in the keyword investor. Uh, okay, it gave us quite a bit of properties, 171 properties. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort from low to high. So it's gonna price it out from the lowest to highest priced homes here that have the keyword investor somewhere in the description. And you can see here it's got um, you know a bunch of land and stuff, parcels and so on. Every now and then you see a property and then this is a list of different, I mean, look how rough this property is. This is a place where we can look for, you know, investment type deals. Like look at this boarded up one here and there's just a lot of them. Now, another thing that I'll do here is I'll click on newest. So instead of low to high, go to newest and newest meaning it's referring to how soon it came out for sale. And I really like this filter because when I pick up the phone and call, I, I really want to get a hold of a brand new listing. If it's sad at all for any length of time and it's a good deal, it's gone. So I try to get right on listings as soon as they come out doing this um, type of search. So like if you look right here, this one here, third one in, if I click on this, you know, three hours ago, this thing was just listed three hours ago. And let's take a look here at this property. Looks pretty clean. And you know, it's got an older kitchen vacant, older bathroom, I mean, totally livable, totally clean, nothing really wrong with it other than that it's dated. So, but let's, let's go ahead and pick this one and see what we can find out here. So it's a three bedroom, one bath, 1179 square feet. It's active for 185. So let's go ahead now and comp this property and see if we can get a number and then call and make an offer to this agent. So I'm going to go ahead and and duplicate this tab. That way I keep one open and one of them I'm gonna comp. On Zillow, just, just X out of that listing that pops up and there we are right there in the middle. Usually it centers it on your screen. So we're right here on Avon. You can see all these streets around here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the boundary and then click this draw button right here and I'm gonna draw you know around this area here. So I'm gonna follow these main roads, go down maybe to here kind of up like this and around. And I try to stick to main roads. We are crossing a few because we're right on the border, you know, of a main road. So, but that's a nice condensed area there. It's gonna keep me central to my neighborhood. 
Then I click apply and these are the properties you know, active on the market. Now I can take a look at some of these and see if there's flipping going along, which I already know this right here is a flip, I can tell because look at it, it's, it's staged and it's all updated, new kitchen, new flooring, everything. Nice flip here, been on the market 45 days at 285.9. So anyway, these are actives right now. What I wanna do is I, I wanna find solds and I wanna put some filters in. So if I switch over to solds, then you can see here it found 64 results that are just in that neighborhood. So quite a few comps. Let's add some more filters in. Oh, let's take out investor and let's put 12 months. Wow, look at that. In the past 12 months, holy cow, look at all the comps. This is insane. 400 comps in the past year in that area. I mean, this is a very transient area here, a lot of activity going on. Let's drop this to six months. I mean, geez, so six months of, of data, not 12 months. Now let's filter out some more. We're 1,200 feet. So I think I'm gonna go anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 on my square feet. Yeah, that got us down to 83, that's great. Let's look at our year built. We are built in 1954. So I'm gonna put maybe on a year built max 1980. Okay, that didn't change much, but at least we're not looking at newer homes. And still have quite a bit of comps. I mean, look at this wholesale deal right on this listing <laughs> or on this sold home. So let's go do, let's see, what other filters can we do? Oh, let me make sure we're not looking at anything but houses. So we'll get rid of all these other check boxes. Uh, I got rid of a few more. And for beds, let's put three bedrooms so we don't look at any two bedrooms. And that brought us down even a little bit more. Um, but I'm noticing here that we've got stuff all over the place. So there's a lot of distress and there's a lot of rehabs going on. Like, look at this. Here's home selling in the hundreds. And then you've got, you know, like this home here at three, you know, sold for 320. And look at it. It looks like new construction. It's not. So it's clearly a rehab. So I'm going to do something here that I think is a smart move. I'm going to put a minimum price of 200000 and why am I doing that? That got me down to 20, I love that. So now I wanna try to find the highest sold homes because I'm comping right now for ARV. So if I, if I put in a filter of 200,000, it's gonna say minimum. It's not gonna show me anything that sold under 200,000, which means it gets rid of all of the distressed sold homes and it gets me into more of the nicer sold homes. So I like that that filtered us down to like 20. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And you can see now we're on this road right here and we've got some, we've got plenty of good comps around here now. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my filter from high to low. And you can see here now we've got a couple in the threes and then down we go. But what I wanna do here is I wanna look at more of like our neighborhood, so, or close to us. So I'm gonna pick a couple of these comps, like let's pick this one here. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking for flips because I want to compare flip to flip. If I buy this house, I fix it up. I want to know what's it going to sell for if I redo it on the open market by looking at other sold homes that are also flips. So this home right here is a flip. It's 1,471. It's a 3-2. So it's a little nicer than ours, a little bigger than ours. But take a look. This is a rehab. They got a big open floor plan, new kitchen, new countertops, new floors. It's vacant. It's empty. It's not staged but they went in here and they redid this home. And so this is a comp. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this address right here. This is Chatham. And we're gonna add this to a list. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my I'm gonna figure out my price per square foot. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna get out my calculator and I'm gonna take the sold price here of $282,000. No tools here, just manually on the calculator, divided by the square footage of 1471 gets me to 192, let's call it, 192. So I'm gonna add this to a note. This home sold for 192 bucks a foot. And then we'll make a list here, see if we can grab a couple of these. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I gotta, I'm just gonna keep going through this list of homes. I'm gonna try to find ones that I think are most relevant to our property. You know, looking at the pictures here, I like this one right here. It's not that far away. This one here on Lad. It looks like a remodel from the outside and 
yeah, look, there's the old picture here, the street view probably from before. And look, this is a remodel. You can see here it's really nicely staged and it's all updated and new. New kitchen, they even did this backsplash with a hood. I mean, they did a really nice job. Look how nice this kitchen is. And you can tell too it's brand new because it still has the wrapper on the appliances. <laughs> That's that blue right there. They're not blue, they're stainless steel, but it's got the cover, the plastic cover still on it. You know, they don't wanna scratch it, it's brand new, right? And you can see here, the I, I think they did a great job too. They went with white and they did good on their floors, stainless steel appliances. But this is a fully remodeled home. So let's see what this baby pulled in here. Again, we're gonna add this to a note. I'm gonna go ahead and run the number and figure out my price per square foot. So I take 285,000, divide that by 1,500. It's a little bigger than ours. Whoops, 1,500 to get 190. I think the last one was 191. We're starting to see a trend. So 190 bucks a foot for lad. Let's add that to a note and then let's go find another one. So I'm gonna go down here and, and try to find some good ones. This one looks kind of like ours as well. It's got a little bit of a porch there, but it's 1,200 feet. I like that. It's That's exact square footage of ours. And again, this is a flip. How do I know? Look at the pictures. You can tell everything's been new and updated. I mean, here's the bathroom, new, all new. They did the same granite, right, as probably the kitchen. Let's go see if there's a kitchen picture in here. Yeah, new kitchen. Look, again, the wrapper's still on the appliances. Did a really nice job. So this is a flip. Let's see what this one pulled in. So if I take 235, nine, divide that by 1200, that gets us 196.5, we'll call it 197. So we've got three rehab comps in the, in the 190s. I think we can say that we've established a trend out here, uh, but I think there's a ton to go through. I mean, a lot of these look like flips. This is a very active market, lots of flipping going on. So we know we could buy this house if we get it at the right number, put some money into it, sell it quickly as a flip because it's just so hot in this market. Okay, so check this out. Now I'm gonna take the average. We got 192, 190, 197 price per foot. I got three of them. Now I can go four, five, six. The more I get, the more accurate my comps are gonna be. I, I prefer to get five or six, but for now, due to the interest of time, let's just go with these three. So if I take, if I take one, 92 plus 190 plus 197, whoops. That gets me 579, divide that by three, gives me 193. So my average is 193 bucks a foot. And then if I multiply that by our square footage of 1179, that's gonna get us to times 1179, 227.5, let's call it 228. So 228,000, that's our ARV for this property, assuming we spend, I think about looking at this property, you know, I would budget probably about 20,000. That'll let me do all new kitchen, all new appliances, new flooring, finish these wood floors, uh, redo this bathroom, basically, you know, probably power wash and do something with this deck do a little bit of landscaping, make it look like these other comps that we just looked at. So it's not gonna take a lot, so I'm gonna go with a $20,000 rehab budget. So if I take 228 and I multiply that by 75%, which is the average flipper formula, minus repairs of 20,000, minus a wholesale fee, let's say a 15,000, that's gonna equal let me do the math with that now. So we're gonna take 228 times 75% minus basically 20 in repairs and 15 in rehab would be 35, gets me to 136. So if I can buy this property for 136, I could probably wholesale it for 150, 149, 150, 151 to a flipper who spends 20, who turns around and resells it for 228. Does that make sense? Hope those numbers add up and, and that makes sense. If not, go back and watch that again. So now it's time to make the offer. Going back to this property here, if we look right here, we've got our agent. There's her name, there's her number. So I'm gonna pick up the phone and call this agent. This is Maggie. 
Yeah, hi Maggie, how are you? My name's Jerry Norton. I'm well, how are you? Good, uh, calling about your brand new listing on Avon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm an investor interested in looking at this property and making an offer. Uh, what can you tell me, what's going on? Um, so this home was previously used as a rental. Um, it is investor owned currently. Um, so yeah, they're kind of, they're you know, reallocating some properties and stuff like that. So they're liquidating some of their homes. Um, it's so vacant though, right? Sale. Yeah, correct. Okay, so it was used as a rental, but it's vacant now. Yeah. Okay. And they're just, they're, um, they're an investor, they're, they have a number of properties and they're just selling some of them? Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I took a, I took a pretty good look at it. And uh, so I'm a flipper, so I'm looking at it as a flip. Okay. Now, um, which means, you know, I'm not sure what your strategy is with your pricing and, and kind of your goal. It's pretty clean. So I know I'm competing with retail, I'm sure, because it's, it's uh, definitely livable, right? Um, mm -hmm. you know, I would go in and do new kitchen and carpet and paint, probably appliances. Roof looks okay. Everything else looks pretty good. So carpet, paint, appliances, I'd redo the bathroom. So I was looking at, there's a lot of flips over there, like a ton <laughs> in that neighborhood. Oh, yeah. So flipping's going on like crazy. But, uh, so that's kind of what I was thinking is, is if I bought it, do a rehab, see if I could put it back up on the market for you know, top dollar and, and get a flip. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think they're, what do you think the sellers are, are really interested in? I mean, are they, are they looking for a cash offer? Are they trying to get retail? Where do you think they're at? They are trying to get lists. Um, um, unfortunately with these, it's tough because I didn't set the price. This was, this was dictated to me and this is what I was told. I was yeah. not happy about <laughs> it. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, you know, at least for, you know, first couple of weeks of the property being on the market, they're not going to really consider anything under asking. Yeah. Um, so they're not really motivated. To, they're not super motivated. Okay. They're, they're feeling out the market maybe. Yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, they're motivated, but they just don't have a lot of flexibility. I see. Hmm. Well, I, I mean, I'd like to make a cash offer. I can close quick, you know, as is. You don't have to worry about FHA inspections or showings or buyers or any of that, you know, mm -hmm. but I do need to be quite a bit lower than where they're at now. So, you know, I'm sure it's not the right time, but I just thought I'd give you a call, kind of feel out what's going on. I mean, if you're up for it, well, first of all, Maggie, I'm, I'm unrepresented, so I'd let you submit the offer for me as a buyer's agent. Are you able to do that? Um, I can represent you, represent you as a customer. Um, we can have that conversation and, you know, forms will need to be signed. Um, we have done it that way in the past. Um, but I typically will only do it if it's, you know, our strongest offer and we know it's going to be accepted just because of the sheer volume of people who do ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and the reason why... What so, are you thinking price-wise for Avon? Yeah, I mean, I need to be... If I... So, let me kind of give you... This, how I came to my number. So I've, I've looked at a handful of comps. I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think the price per foot for that type of house is about 193. Oh, excuse me one second. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Sorry, I got a cough. Um, so 193 puts, puts me at about 228 would be ARV or, or you know, retail fixed up. So if I back out, you know, rehab and and profit and closing and carry and all of that, I need to be down in the in the one thirties. So gotcha. yeah, I mean I'm about fifty thousand lower than where you're listed right now. So I know it's quite a bit lower. So yeah, but I am all cash. Close um, quickly. I mean, my thought would be Maggie, um, if you were up for it, to at least present a verbal offer, see what they say. Yeah. So. Um, we're kind of doing that right now. We have a couple properties that are that are going kind of slow, um, and we're just kind of holding. You know, after about seven days, we're gonna, we go to the seller and say, "Hey, this is the feedback we've gotten. This is we're, these are the offers we have," um, and kind of reevaluate from there. So, yeah. if you could um, send me an email with your terms, uh -huh. and we'll hold that for. Uh, I will keep that on file. Yeah. Um, and 
once you know we have that weekly meeting with the seller, we'll let them know you know the feedback. Um, the question for you, because I, we actually, or I do, I do the fix and flip division of the hedge fund that I work for. Um, and for this particular property, because of the higher purchase price, we, um, we're looking into the option of actually like adding on to the property since, oh. like, as you know, it's such uh-huh. a wonderful area. And, um, and the square so footage is a little low for like a lot of the homes are more like 1400, 1500 feet. And they exactly. get another, and, and they get another bathroom the too. Contractors you have and all of that, but if it was a possibility for you, the numbers looked really good. Having a second floor and doubling the square footage, mm-hmm. um, we had an exit price, you know, in the high threes. Mm. Mm-hmm. What would you think it would cost to do that that addition? <sighs> we were trying to get it between eighty and ninety k. Okay. Um, but again, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know what kind of access the contractors you have, you know, versus what we have. Um, I mean, it depends on load bearing and, you know, a lot of things, what you can do with that and how much it costs. It's on a slab mm-hmm. or what's it on? Uh, it's on a crawl space. Yeah, it's on a crawl. So, yeah, I mean, I've done that before several times. So, I mean, it's, it, but it'll take like a structural person to get in there and, and really tell you what you can and can't do. But I mean, that's not a bad idea. I think the neighborhood could support it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'd you'd what double yeah, the square footage? That, you know, that that was my recommendation because I looked at it. I was like, there's there's really not a lot of comp at this size because people are, are popping the tops on these properties or just knocking them down and building new. Yeah. So. Uh huh. Now, do you have other properties that are investment properties that you're looking I for, like cash know. offers? Yeah, definitely, always. Um, if you look, look me up on Zillow, all of my active listings will be on there. Okay. I mean, I'd I'd love to I'd love to give you offers on whatever other whatever other listings you have, where you're looking for you know a cash offer, especially if you if you can give me some feedback on you know like hey, this one's a good one. I think this would be a great flip. You know, sellers are are eager or whatever. You know, anything you can kind of help me lead me in the right direction on some of your listings, that'd be great. Again, I, I strategically, yeah. Maggie, don't work with a buyer's agent because I, I prefer to go straight to the listing agent and work directly with you on your own listings. And if you're able to get, mm-hmm. you know, represent me so you get the you get both sides of the commission and, you know, long-term, I want to build that, that relationship where I'm your investor, you call when you're looking for a cash offer. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't have a ton of time right now, but can we wrap back around tomorrow? Because I think uh-huh. I listed uh, two houses today, that two other houses today that I think would be a really good fit for you. Same um, seller or a different Mike seller? Mike, <clears throat> same seller. Okay, so they put three up. Were the other ones rentals as well? Yes, it's all the same uh, portfolio. Yeah. Um, okay, one, yeah. Uh, if you want to take a look at them, it's uh, 2330 Beecher Road. Um, okay, say it again, the address. 2330 Beecher, B E E C H E R. Okay, I'll take a look at that one. And then the other one is 987. Uh huh. Harwell. Harwell. H A R W E L L. Okay, I'll take a look at both those. Are they are they a little more yeah. eager? Are they a little more motivated on those ones, or? Unfortunately, not right now, just because they were just listed today. But again, if, if there's a certain number you have in mind and you're feeling patient, um, yeah. we can see if they become more flexible down the line. Um, yeah, I, I know Beecher was listed previously at this at this number, and it didn't have much traction. Um, but it is in such a good area if you look at the comps that it, it's a shame because. You know, it's the house is it's, it's decent square footage, like over fourteen hundred square feet. Um, you know, you know, it'd be great. You know, I think we could do Maggie is like let's we got these three properties, same seller. You know, I'd be happy to look at the other two, give you kind of my cash number, and then now and then you'll have those. And then if you just help me along, coach me along, where if we start to get down where they would entertain, you know, those offers, then we can we can start that conversation back up. 
you know, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm in this for the long haul. So I'll play the long game on this where, you know, if we got to wait and they get some market feedback first and then they're willing to look at it. But I still think it's worth it for you to at least present a verbal that way in their mind, they kind of can start to see where, where a flipper would come in at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, go ahead and take a look at all those. Okay. And email me with the terms that you would like. Yeah. And I will keep it on file and I'll, I'll bring it up with the seller when we have our meeting. Okay. What's your email? Uh, Maggie, M-A-G-G-I-E, at Sylvan, S-Y-L-V-A-N, road.com. Sylvanroad.com. Okay. Got it. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I really appreciate your time. Look forward to working with you. Yeah, hopefully we can get something done. Um, if there's anything else that you've got, let me know that as well. <clears throat> yeah, just look me up on Zillow and all my current listings will be on there. They'll probably be the easiest way to show a picture. Yeah, that. I've got it here. It looks like you've got 12, yeah. 12 actives right now. Yep. Okay, perfect. All Thanks, right, Maggie. I'll come back on tomorrow and we will talk soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, sir. Have a good night. Bye. All right. So, well, I mean, we're, uh, I hope you guys kind of caught what's going on there. You know, it's always good to ask questions, try to figure out what's going on. The listing agent is the gatekeeper to the seller, right? This is on market. It's active. So that means that agent can give us information about where the seller's at, what their intentions are, what their motivation is, if they're motivated, if they're not motivated, how soon they are looking for putting a deal together. In this situation, it's it's some investors. They own a bunch of rentals. They've got three of them that she just listed. I got the addresses on the other two. You know, again, I'm about fifty thousand dollars below where they listed at. Uh, you could sense from her. You could tell from her that she's like, yeah, we're overpriced. But you know, she's doing what her investors are asking her, listing where they're asking. I have a sense that these investors are like, hey, market's hot. Let's see what we can get. And if we can get a home run, you know, sale, then great but they're not quite ready to fire sale this stuff or sell it at a, at a discount, especially if they're like rent ready, which this one is. It's like throw a tenant back in there and you're good to go. It doesn't, it doesn't it's livable, right? So livables are always tough because we have to compete with homeowners, which is definitely the case with this property. But, uh, but again, I established that relationship with that agent. Um, she's gonna present a verbal, she's gonna stay in touch, she's gonna She's going to work this investor by going back to them with, hey, here's this cash buyer. Here's that number. She'll probably present to him. Here's all these other offers I've gotten, like she said. And so if we just if we just keep in touch with her, do a good follow up, then I think this agent's going to be a great bird dog for us for more deals, either with this particular seller on any of these properties. And she's got 12 other listings. I'm going to go through these and see which one of these look like they're distressed and would be good for a cash offer. And, um, and again, the big picture is that I build a relationship with her to where ongoing as time goes on, she gets new listings, new distressed properties. She calls and says, Jerry, I got one that fits what you look for. I understand your formula, you know, here's a deal. And, and then we can do deals over time. So that's kind of the goal there. And so I hope you found this helpful. It was a great process to go through this guys. I did all of this manually, no tools, no software. You know, this, that makes it a lot tougher, a lot harder because I got to, you know, run a calculator. And I built a system that does all of that for you. Not only does it have calculators and, and analyzers, uh, it has all kinds of lead generating tools and data and all the other tools to find and locate sellers and uh, contracts, everything you need to do your wholesaling and flipping business. It's called Flipster. It's an all-inclusive platform. If you haven't seen it, you owe it to yourself to check it out. Just go to getflipster.com and you can see it in action and, uh, and check that out. And that's it, guys. Thanks for joining me on this video. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. With over 600 videos now, or close to 600 videos, this is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping, and I'll see you on the next video.